Good morning. And welcome to Lesson 2, Video 2. So, for those of you who watched yesterday's uh, video, there was a bit of a debacle with the page numbering. I think I've got that back under control. Be patient either way. So today's, I'm going to start off, i got to get this out of the way, because a certain percentage of you, for a certain percentage of viewers, this is their first time watching. So here you go. This lesson will only make sense if you're watching the, um, the practice text. So download the latest free copy of the practice text. It's uncreatively entitled, The First Set of Practice Texts. Oh, I'm sorry, it's the first set of lesson texts. Anyway, it's simple. Just below this video, there are two links. If you don't see two links right below this video, then you need to get yourself to YouTube's dedicated page for this video. And that's simple. Just find the link in the bottom right-hand corner. It's a little symbol for YouTube, a little logo. Give that bad boy a click. R2, it'll take you right to the dedicated page. Below my video, you'll see two links. The link on the bottom, or the second link, will take you to the class materials page for the first quarter. On that page, there's a bunch of free stuff, including a free image to download and print out, which I recommend you do, especially for this, this, these set of lessons. There's a free essay to take a look at, and the second link is will take you to the free PDF. So if you haven't already done that, do that now. Additionally, if this is your first time tuning in to this series of lessons, um, do yourself a favor. Start with Lesson 1, Part 1. Work your way up to Lesson 1, Part 40, then eventually to Lesson 2, Part 2. It might take a while, it might even bruise your ego, but you'll be sure to be on the same page with me, and you'll be glad you did. So let's dig in. Please join me on page 13. You'll know it's 13 because the first thing, the heading of the page reads, Chen Rei Zig's Intellectual and Mystic Paths to Enlightenment. And a couple inches below that, it says the passive visualization of the Great Compassion One. Right below that's the link for the lesson that explains what that means. Then there's a line drawing of the Buddha of Compassion. And beneath that's the first quatrain. Remember what a quatrain is. If you don't know what a quatrain is, you haven't watched the previous videos, go back and do that now. Quatrain is a set of four lines. And so the first quatrain begins an arm's length above my head, and then in brackets it says snap, which infers that you'll actually reach above your head and snap your hands. And let me make sure that showed up on the, on the screen okay, and it really didn't. So let me adjust the camera. And just the camera again. Look, I look like a what's it called? Kilroy was here. Okay, and it still is not working. Maximum adjustment. Here's my fingers, elbows. You know, my hands fully extended above my head. Snap your fingers once. And here's my mug. So an arm's length above my head. Snap. And those of all other sentient beings pervading space. So today we're going to focus on the first three quarters of the first line. Now, I want to give you some context. So turn back, I think it's to page four. Let's try that real quick. Yes, page four, uh, which we, ex now as I explained, and you'll notice. Remember all those links that took us just, just to get up to speed for that first exercise? The first exercise on page four reads, where is this purple crown ohm wheel? And then we chant, Sahasrara. And if you remember, if your memory is really good, you'll recall 
that I said we're only going to use this exercise for the first lesson and all the remaining lessons we'll use another technique to center our energies in a contrived and artificial way. So in the first lesson we centered our energies towards the top of our head in a contrived way by visualizing by using using words and assumptive questions and rhetorical questions that guide our attention to the crown of our head and then by invoking one of the mantras for that psychic center. Now, let's go back to page 10, I'm sorry, page 13, and by back I mean forward. Let's go to page 13, guys. And instead of, sna instead of using a contemplation of the crown chakra, we're going to draw our attention to the place just above our head um, and snap our fingers. And that is a profoundly effective way. Sometimes um, monks or lamas will do something I like to call psychic first aid. And when someone, if a student comes to them and they're in a crisis and they're completely freaking out, they'll set their fingers above the, the, the student's head and they might shout a whisper or shout, even shout a mantra syllable and that'll help them snap them into their right mind, a more lucid, resourceful state of mind. So doing that is very, very powerful. And you can say, well, why are you teaching me a second technique? <laughs> My friend, if you attend all, if you watch all the videos of all the classes, you're going to learn many techniques to do many things. The, tool, the idea is to gradually fill your, uh, your metaphoric tool shed with as many tools as possible because different tools are useful in different situations. Remember, everything changes all the time because everything is affected by everything, if not directly then indirectly, if not actually then potentially. So since we're constantly in a state of flux, it's useful to have an array of tools to reach for. If one doesn't work, another one most likely will. Now, it's kind of cool, this works nine times out of ten. If you reach above your head, you'll notice that your elbow, or the inner joint of your elbow, is pretty much, much flush with the crown of your head. And your forearm and your, your fingers extend about, give or take, a foot and a half or 18 inches above your head. That works out really well. We might be all different size, but our ratios are very, very similar. No matter how short or tall you all are, unless you are suffering from sort of a congenital birth defect or a um, disfigurement due to a trauma, um, we all have the same ratios in our vertebrae. We have five lumbar vertebrae. We have 14, I'm sorry, uh, 12 lumbar uh, thoracic vertebrae and we have 7 cervical um, vertebrae. So basically that's 5 and 6 times 2 and 7. So that ratio is pretty cool. In other words, 5 times 1, 6 times 2, 7 times 1. Those are the ratios of our vertebrae. That's pretty cool. That ratio is similar in many mammalian species. Very, very cool. Um, so, it's neat how when any of us reach over our head, the ratio of where our, our hands wind up is virtually identical. That'll make some more, even more sense further on in a future video. So, here's the thing right now. Some people say, cool, I know how to center my energy. That's all I need to know. Whenever something bad happens, I'll just center my energy and feel all better. The answer is no, you won't feel all better. You feel a little better. You see, center our energy is not designed to, well, in Buddhism, it's not designed as an escape or a dodge or an end run around. It's designed as a preparatory practice for a more sophisticated practice. Just like you were taught in the first set, of, uh, of the videos comprising the first lesson, 
were taught that the contrived concentration was a preliminary practice to spontaneous awareness. Spontaneous awareness was a preliminary practice to the contemplations of wisdom that help us to let go of what's going on, not by suppressing, not by repressing, not by indulging, but by exploring the true ultimate nature of all phenomena in a pragmatic and easy and highly accessible manner. So there are many spiritual paths, but on the Buddhist path, we don't use concentration as an escape. And instead of hiding from reality, we use concentration as a tool to enhance our focus upon reality. So, at arm's length above my head, snap. Now, I could go further. I want to check the time first. Well, that's been 10 minutes. That's probably enough for today. Tomorrow we'll explore the final portion of the first line and the, re and the second line of the first quatrain in its entirety. Right now, you know enough, you know what you've know, learned anew, new centering technique. And you could say, hey, but what should I do for homework? Do the homework that you learned in lesson one. Remember I, ta I, sh I taught you a nine minute exercise to deconstruct whatever's going on in your life, whether it's painful or neutral or pleasurable. And I gave you a bunch of um, guided meditations. Use one of those. Continue using one of those every morning and every evening until we get to the place in lesson two where you're given brand new homework. Well, that's it. I'm going to give you a quick benediction. I want to thank you for your time and your kind attention. I thank you for your interest in evolution and, and becoming the person that your dog already thinks you are. I want to thank you for your time and your I mean, thank you for um, reading my essays, watching my videos, doing your homework. And, when, and for those who do, making contributions. That's how I buy my food. Thank you very much. So may you and yours be healthy and happy. Om Mani Padme Hum. And before you go, I want to remind you of two things. Number one, in the bottom left-hand corner of your screen, right around here, there's two buttons. There's a thumbs down and a thumbs up. Please click the thumbs up. That means like. Once you click like, it'll reveal three social networking buttons. I think Facebook, Twitter, and Google+. Once you click all three, share it with your the, with the people you're associated with. And um, you'll remember at the beginning of the video, I told you about the two links below the video. The first link. It takes you to the registration page so you can reserve your seat for the next series of weekly webinars. When does that begin? Friday, the 2nd of November. I'll see you there. Bye-bye.